Joe, thank you very much for joining us yeah, today. Hi, Chris. When we look at the functions and values of optical networking systems in a 5G world, what exactly are we looking at? What are the, what are the, the main values that it, that it has? Uh, yes, definitely we're living in a very exciting period of time with 5G coming to us. So as you mentioned, the 5G will lead to a lot of changes in our industry. We need more bandwidth, low latency, and also more connectivities. And for that, the fiber communication network can really provide the support and also can really bridge the globe uh, by using the widely deployed optical network systems. So this is really, we're looking at uh, optical networking 2.0 mm -hmm. in the 5G area. Yeah. But what, what, does that, what does that actually mean? Again, what does that signal? Yes, actually optical networking 2.0 is what we call to be the second phase of the deployment of fiber networks to really aim at emerging applications such as 5G to have more bandwidth and also basically lower cost and power consumption per bit, more spectrum, and also easy to manage. So we need to do all those things in order to support 5G better. Mm. So when Huawei looks at the, the consideration and evolution of, of key technologies on, on ON 2.0, mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the factors that come into play? Yes, for uh, basically for ON 2.0 in Huawei's uh, strategy, we have uh, three things to do. We have to have a new speed, basically higher speed, uh, more than 200 gigabit per second per wavelength. In Mobile World Congress this year, we announced 600G commercial deployment uh, per wavelength. That is really an industry first. And going forward, we are looking at over one terabit per wavelength uh, in the you know in our deployment. Uh, then for that, we really need to break uh, the current limits by better approaching the nonlinear channel limit by having better modulation, better detection, and the better signal processing. So we have a lot of things to do on the newer speed area. Then the second area is a newer spectrum, to have a more spectrum available to us. In this year's Congress, you know, uh, conference, we announced the Super C, so that's another breakthrough. And we help to continue the breakthrough to offer more bandwidth in the optical domain to better support the 5G. The third area is basically we need to have a newer science because we do not want to give more complexity as we ramp up the speed uh, to our, you know, basically customers. We want to simplify the uh, central offices by using optical cross-connect and other techniques. Uh, and also we want to make the, those sites intelligent so that the customers will be easy to uh, manage and run the system. So that brings to the fourth point, which is the optical intelligence. We want the optical pipe no longer a uh, down pipe. Instead, an uh, intelligent pipe that can have uh, a lot of uh, good things to do self-healing, self-optimization, so that our network operators can easily manage the system uh, to provide the best value to our community, to our society, so that uh, the whole industry can really be a driver to enable the next uh, generation of the information age so that everybody in the world can benefit from innovations from uh, all the companies, including Huawei. So it really is a transformation from uh, a static sort of system into something that's much more dynamic and yes. will require a complete set of new tools, is that correct? That's definitely correct. That's why we see more and more people coming to Mobile World Congress and other trade shows such as OFC. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah. Shamu. We appreciate all of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.